Hey guys, I'm Ich. I've been a sports videographer for over 15 years and during that time I've filmed a lot of basketball both at the NBA level and the international level. And today I want to move away from the content that I typically produce for jumbotrons and big projections and instead focus specifically on Instagram. So if you enjoy producing basketball mixtapes for the gram, this video is literally made for you. I'll be sharing very valuable tips that will help improve your game straight away and have you producing super creative content for Instagram in no time. So let's start right now by grabbing a camera and going through some shooting tips. All right, first thing first. Um, actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever produced content specifically for Instagram. So... I guess I'd be pretty much talking out of my ass if I was telling you guys how to do it. If only I knew someone who was an expert at producing professional basketball content for the gram. Oh, wait a minute, I do! Thank you so much for having me on the channel, E. Hi everyone, my name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports work, specifically creating basketball videos, which I do full time for the Canadian Elite Basketball League as a videographer and editor. On YouTube, my channel is just my name, Peter Sorellis. So you can go subscribe there if you want to see more videos like this where I give you tips to the camera and go through some editing tutorials. And if you want to see some of my professional work as a basketball videographer, you can follow me on Instagram. That is at P Sorellis. And today I'm going to be using my expertise from the sport media field to go over some of the techniques that I use when I'm filming basketball and things that you should keep in mind if you're out in the field filming a basketball game or a practice specifically for posting on Instagram. Alright, so now we're going to talk about some tips that you can take when you're shooting basketball games. These are all things that I do when I'm filming basketball videos and I think that it adds to my style for videos that I post on Instagram and really makes me stand out from the crowd. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm filming basketball videos is I always shoot wide. Like I shoot wider than I would think I have to shoot. And the reason for this is one, basketball is a very fast game. People are going up and down the court very quickly. There's a lot of sudden cutting and movements. So if you're not shooting wide, you might get a player that goes slightly out of frame, which can make it more difficult to center your shot and cut clips together later when you're editing. And two, sometimes I like doing the stabilization effect and you usually need extra room around the edges when you're doing this effect. So by shooting wider, you're gonna have that room around the edges to play with effects like stabilization. And if you shoot too tight, you're just not gonna be able to execute that type of thing. So always shoot wide, or at least a little wider than you think you have to. Another technique that I love to do when I film basketball is over cranking my shutter speed. So over cranking is when you use a faster shutter speed than what you typically should be using to create less motion blur in your image. And I like doing this because I find that sometimes when I'm filming basketball videos, it's a little bit too blurry if I use the shutter speed that I'm supposed to be using because the players are just moving around so quickly. So by over cranking, I get a clearer image where the players have sharper edges around them. It's not as blurry. You can really make out what's happening. I'll over crank when I'm shooting 120 frames per second from 1 over 250 all the way up to like 1 over 400 just so you can really make out the movement of all the players. And if I was ever shooting in 4K24, which I don't usually shoot, I usually shoot my basketball videos in slow motion, but say I was going to shoot 24 frames per second, I would probably over crank from 1 over 50 all the way up to like 1 over 250 because I'm not really concerned with how realistic the motion blur looks. I just want to make sure that the player in the video is as clear as possible for if I want to stabilize, do effects, and I just think it's a cooler look. But you can do this technique for yourself and then decide whether you want to continue to over crank or not. Let's talk about in-camera transitions. So I'm just going to move back a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. But I like using a lot of in-camera transitions like zoom-ins, whip pans, that type of thing to cut clips together when I'm filming. And essentially what I'm trying to do is create motion blur in my image at impactful moments so that I can hide a cut in the motion blur and transition from one clip to the next. So say a player makes a pass to a shooter and then the shooter puts a shot up. I'll be focusing on the point guard who's got the ball. 
he passes the ball. I then whip the camera to the shooter and the shooter makes the shot. Well, when I whip that camera, I created motion blur in the image. And if I had a cut in the motion blur that occurred while the camera was moving, it's gonna be really hard to notice. So knowing that I have a clip where I have motion blur going from the right side to the left side, I can film another clip in the game, maybe of somebody dribbling the ball where I'm filming them for a few seconds. And then I whip the camera from the right to the left. Now I have the shot of someone dribbling. You whip the camera from the right to the left and I can cut that shot during the motion blur and blend it with the shot of someone shooting the ball because I have right to left motion blur in that as well. You cut both those shots on the motion blur, you stick them together. You don't need to do any fancy effect. It's a straight cut, but because the motion blur makes the image all distorted and you can't really tell what's happening, when you play it back, it looks like you're seamlessly whipping from one shot to the next. And when someone's passively watching a video on social media, this is a really good way to blend your shots together so that it just seems more fluid. You can also do this by creating motion blur, zooming the camera in or out. There is a whole bunch of ways you can like do these in-camera transitions. The whole idea is that you're just creating a blur to fill the frame or at least hide the cut. And then you can start putting these clips together and it makes your edit move a lot faster than if you're just hard cutting all the time. Not that there's anything wrong with a hard cut, but this is a nice alternative that can make your videos stand out a little bit. Finally, if you're shooting for Instagram, you're probably wondering, should I shoot vertically for Instagram? Say I'm gonna make a reel, or should I shoot horizontally? And personally, I think that most of the time you should be shooting horizontally. And the reason for this is that players, when they're playing basketball, are moving very quickly from side to side, but they're not moving very quickly up and down. It's also very predictable when somebody is gonna jump and move up and down. So if you're filming vertically and someone moves side to side really quick, you don't have a lot of room on the edges of your image to kind of keep them into the frame. And if someone makes a sudden move that you're not expecting, they can fully exit your frame and then you've just lost that data. If you film horizontally, you have more room on the sides to compensate for somebody making a quick move from one side to the other so that you can keep them in the frame and then reframe it later in post. And at least you still have the data of that person in the shot. The one time I think you should film vertically is if you're filming in a controlled environment like a workout where you're telling the players what to do or they're doing a drill that's super repetitive like they're doing the same action over and over and over in a practice at that point it becomes very predictable to figure out what the player is going to do so you can afford to film vertically and still keep them in the frame but if you're filming a live action game and people are moving around all over the place I personally wouldn't because I feel like I would just miss too many shots and it's too risky. So I recommend film horizontally. You'll miss less moments. You'll get better footage, but there's moments where you can film vertically and it really just depends on your comfort level and experience with shooting basketball videos. All right, good news, bad news. Good news is that there is a whole other part to this video that is fully dedicated to editing basketball, mixtapes and reels and all that good stuff for Instagram. Not only will Peter give us some tips and tricks, but he's also gonna take us through an entire edit step-by-step -step on his computer. So that's gonna be very interesting. But the bad news is that I couldn't put it into this video because it would have been way too long. So it's gonna be in part two, which is gonna come out in a few days. So if you don't want to miss it i strongly suggest that you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when it comes out otherwise if you really can't wait to get your basketball editing fix you can always go to peter's channel in the meantime because he's got plenty of tutorials on the topic but uh, also make sure that on my channel you're aware that there is a giveaway going on right now so if you want to win a 4k action camera make sure you watch my last video to learn how you can put your name in the hat because the giveaway ends at the end of this month so I hope you guys appreciated this video. I know I learned a lot. I am very curious to try that over cranking technique and see what it looks like. But in the meantime, again, thank you guys for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.